Hey everybody, my name is Matt Pierce. I am the Learning and Video Ambassador for TechSmith. So glad you could all join me today. Excited to be with you. We've just gotten back off for a short holiday here in the US and so ready to go and ready to get back at it. Uh, as always, we're grateful that we can be here. One of the things we like to talk about, of course, to make sure you guys are all aware of it, if you weren't aware, is the TechSmith Academy. Go check it out. It is a free online learning platform with courses that help you learn about visual communication and video creation. Go learn about script writing writing, storyboarding, shooting video, recording audio. We've got some great, fantastic interviews with people talking about things like creating training content or creating video content. We've talked to some very successful people who've made done a lot with their YouTube channels, and so they've got great advice. Go check it all out. It is all free. We'd love to have you go out there once again. You can check that out at bit.ly forward slash TechSmith Academy, or just search for TechSmith Academy in your favorite browser, and I'm sure the Google search will allow you to find what you need to find. But today, I'm really excited because we are going to be talking about something I think is really important and fundamental that I find a lot of people actually struggle with. We're going to be talking about creating video tutorials, which in of itself doesn't have to be a difficult process, but we're going to be talking specifically about the process of recording audio first and then building your video. And the reason we're talking about this is because someone that was watching the live stream had asked about that, like, how do you do this well? How do you do it? And I think it's so important because we talk about it as a preferred workflow that I wanted to talk here on the live stream and go work through this process. We're gonna, it's gonna be a very much a work out loud kind of walk you through. I've created a script that's very simple uh, we like to do simple examples because then we don't, I don't want to co overly complicate it, but I know things can get more complicated, but we're going to take a simple, simple script. Uh, I've already recorded the audio, so you don't have to listen to me do that. We're going to do some editing on that audio to kind of give you some tips. And then I'm going to talk through how to build it out. And you know, cause first things first, there are a lot of ways you could go about building a video. Some people just do what I'm doing now. They they basically go live without even going live. They just record and talk and do. And that has its place. I don't want to discount it. I don't want to throw it out, but it has its place in the process of creating videos. What you're going to miss out in that process, though, is you might miss things. You might say things repetitively unnecessarily. You might not be the best off the cuff or, you know, just generally things can be harder and it will be a longer video. Doesn't mean it's bad, it just means be aware of what you're gonna get. It's a great way to get information out quickly though. Now, uh, I do recommend that if you're making tutorial videos, it is a good idea to write a script. If you need a script outline, a template to help you build one, uh, basics of writing a script in the TechSmith Academy, there's a free template there, you can go download it. But really, a script is really great because you can massage it, you can take it and get rid of anything you don't need. The secret to a good script is cut, cut, cut. Get rid of all the stuff that you don't need. And once you have that, then you kind of have to, at least two paths that you could take. You could take the script and you can uh, record your video. Well, three, we could ro record your video and audio at the same time. That's really tough to read and do. You could record your video and then just talk to those pieces. I don't like that because I find that I'm not always sure how long I need to, like, how long do I have? Do I have to rush and say this quickly? Or do I have to kind of fill some space and talk a little bit slower? Which is always kind of awkward. Now, I know people that like to make their videos that way and they're very successful at it. Again, I'm not saying that that's a wrong way. I'm just saying it's a, a way that I would say there are other ways to do it. The third way that, and the one that we're gonna focus on today is this workflow of you're going to record your audio first. And then we're gonna build a video based on that audio. And the reason I like this is because I think once I get my audio about the way it should be, it kinda of got the flow going, I edited it out, it's less flexible. And if there's something I need to change, like, you know, it's gonna be, on the audio side, it's gonna be really hard to start like and just fit in a piece. I, I get it, some people can are good at that. My voice never sounds the same if I need to fill in a sentence. You can never really just fill in a word it makes it sound really weird. You're going to be able to hear it. So what we're going to do is get the audio set, and then we're going to start building out the actual recordings. In this case, we're going to do screen recordings. You could use camera recordings, and uh, if you take do multiple takes, the hard part with camera recordings is um, if the mouth has to match, it's going to be really impossible. Uh, that's why I like for this process for screen recordings. Um, 
Okay, so where do we want to start? Well, let's first things first. I'm going to let me bring some things over here. Got to keep things kind of going. I'm going to switch my screen and we're going to go to, let's go to this guy right here. See me, you can see my Word document. I'm just going to get some of these other little windows out of the way because I got 17,000 things going on here. Okay, so this is the script that I wrote for today. Uh, this is the sample script template that we use at TechSmith. We use a lot of things like this just as a, a tip. We usually have about three columns. One, numbers are really good just keeping track of like, oh, look at you know, look at line seven or whatever. We also use it for when we're localizing a video. So that way it's easy for localization to say like, this is line seven. This is the translation, translated version. Uh, second column is this is the action. You could also use images here, screenshots, drawings. This is kind of like a lightweight storyboard. So we know what to action to take. And then we've got the narration. Now, like I said, I went through and I, I did all this work. I recorded this already. It's all set. It's not a complex video. I didn't want to get into complexity to making something real complex. want to get the basic workflow down here. So I uh, got a script. So we don't actually, I'm going to move that out of the way for now because I don't think we need it right this second. And so this is a, a little website we're going to be working with. Um, not a big deal. Just it's, this is the subject, but let me bring over here Camtasia. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Get this thing out of the way so you can see it. Okay, so uh, I did add here just, a, I, I, let's say in my, this company, if we're working for, I added a little title slide intro. Welcome to the Fidelity Holdings website. Whether you're looking to open a new account, manage your investments, or just learn more, we have information. Okay, so we've got just some audio that I recorded. I took the script, I recorded it. A couple things I know about myself when I record audio, and, I, and you can have your own methodology doing this. I know that I have a little bit of a way to indicate that I think the previous take wasn't very good or that I redid it. And the way I do that is usually like, just in front of the microphone, I'll do something like this. I don't want this to be too loud, right? So I just snap twice. And what I do is when I, We'll make this a little bit bigger, hopefully. Yeah, I can make that waveform a little bigger. You can see down here, over here, I've got these two spikes. And if I highlight those, and I'm gonna play those back, that's an indicator that like, probably this part right here before it, I didn't like or I messed up. I, it, it could be that you said a word wrong. It could be that you uh, fumbled something you, or just didn't like the way it sounded to yourself, so you, you did it again. So if I take that, once you've submitted, you'll see the notification that your request has been submitted. Okay, it's, it's not bad. Once you've submitted, you'll see that the notification that your request has been submitted. Okay, very similar. This would be a subjective call. I didn't really make a mistake per se, but I just, one of the things in Camtasia, what you're going to do when you're getting your audio ready is you're going to cut these out. Now, one of the things to look for, I'm going to zoom in on the timeline a little bit. Let me, it's kind of at the bottom of the screen. I hope that's okay. Um, but what, you know, you want to leave some gap between your lines. If you don't leave gaps, what you're going to be fighting against when you do this process is that things are too quick or too cut, cut tightly that you're not going to be able to leave, but kind of fit things together. So I'm going to bring this back here, this red marker, and I'm just going to right click and I'm going to, I'm just going to delete a range. I could do that, or I could just do a ripple delete. Camtasia kit's got stitching. I'm going to unstitch that because I don't want it to be, I don't want to be connected right now. I really want it to be so I can edit it later. And you can see like here between this line submitted, I do have a gap. We'll receive. It's also a really good time. Just a pro tip here that I find that like, if you leave a gap, that's when you can do your like heavy breath. If you're like <gasps> feeling winded, what you should do is like read your line, pause for fifth, half a second, and then you can go, ah, <sighs> Breathe, and then you might have to edit those out unless you're using a tool that does that for you. But, um, and then I got one more here for the prompts that will help you correct the issue. And I clicked again. If you run into any issues, look for the prompts that will help you correct the issue. Again, it's a preference choice. I didn't, I didn't really mess anything up in my recording and I'm gonna delete, just delete the range this time and just move that over, save us because uh, I make a mistake. You could also turn on magnetic tracks. Uh, that would be uh, a good way to do that if you're editing your audio. So again, we just want to go in through and clean up our audio, right? We want to make sure that we've gotten rid of any extra takes, anything that isn't working well for it. And then 
we're really in a good spot to start building this thing out. Um, so from this point on, you probably would want to have your script open. And there's a couple things we could do. We could literally listen to this audio and play it back and record to it. Um, it gets a little tricky because of timing, right? Like, if, what if you said something faster than you can actually complete it? You know, sometimes that's with when you're opening up. Uh, let me let me jump away from the screen for a second. When you're opening up, say, a browser or your application's got to load, you got to wait for it. If you're playing the audio back and recording at the same time, it's great for syncing, like kind of like getting the rhythm and whatnot. But then there's going to be times when it's going to just kind of fall apart because it's difficult if your computer is taking longer than you anticipated. Um, and so, you know, what you can do is stop the recording. You can make it work because, you know, uh, it's okay. It, you can do that. And if you've got something that you think you can do all the way through, that's a great way to do it. I used to do a lot of tutorial videos that way, um, just kind of following through and listening to myself. Uh, I would usually use another application. Uh, at the time, Camtasia couldn't do both, record and playback. Now I think we could do it just fine. Uh, but, you know, you could put it in your media player or whatever tool you're using, play it back and just listen and record along. In this case, though, I want to start with, I think, the workflow I've gotten more and more used to, which is I'm going to record based on just following the script. And as we do this, there's a couple things you're going to want to look for. Again, we're going to want to have a lot of gaps, a lot of pauses. If your mouse is always moving, it makes it hard to clip that part out. Like, cause if it's like constantly moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, when are you gonna really be able to trim it without a jump? And jumps aren't the end of the world, but you'd like to avoid it. So I'm gonna do the action, pause, move on to the next action. And I'm, I can do this, uh, well, I'll just have the script open and I could just read along and it's not even gonna, not even gonna affect what we're going to do and then we'll bring it in uh, and I'll show you. So let me get, uh, let me get back to my screen here. So Camtasia, I'm just going to go ahead and hit record. I've got my website all ready here. I think we're seeing the Camtasia recorder, which, uh, let's see where to go. So I've got so many things turned on right now that it's, uh, let me go to this one. Let's see. So we should be seeing that screen and Camtasia, where'd you go? This is a challenge again. There we go. So you can see Camtasia. I'm going to turn on this. And I, in this case, I'm not going to worry about screen size going through all that stuff. That's a conversation for another day. I'm just going to record this whole monitor. I'm going to turn off my webcam because I don't need that on. I've got my uh, microphone. We'll just keep it. I've got another microphone over here. I'm not, I'm not worried about audio. So actually we can, I'm going to keep it on for reference purposes. Uh, I don't need system audio. And I've got my script on my other screen, so I think we should be pretty good to go here. So the first line that we're going to record is Welcome to Fidelity Holdings website. I'm going to say that we have an introduction intro that we're going to we have in Camtasia. We don't need that for. So I'm going to start at line two of my script. And you can see just again, line two is when whether you're looking to open a new account, manage your investments, or just learn more. That's what we're going to record for. So probably just going to scroll the screen a little bit. So here we go. It's counting down. Okay, I'm just going to get my mouse in position here. Let's put it over to the side. And first line, whether you're looking to do to do, just going to start scrolling here. We'll go down. It's not a big page. This is just kind of a dummy web page and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to put my mouse cursor kind of over here because the next line and notice I'm not moving my mouse cursor right now. Next line is to get started first fill out your name. Well, my name is Matt. My last name is Pierce. Now, if I was really doing a recording, I'd probably get rid of those drop downs because I didn't like that. So that's something to be aware of. You might want to practice your recording first. So look for those things that probably go into incognito. So I didn't get those. Um, the next line here, and doesn't matter, I've just kind of waited, is enter your e email address. Well, we're going to put test this address, and I don't like how long this is taking me to type it out. I don't know, fake e email address. Okay, just leave my mouse cursor there. Now, I should have actually pulled it over to the side if I was doing that. So actually, let's just do this again. We're just going to go here, and we're going to go test this email at that email address. I didn't move my mouse cursor again, so I screwed it up, but I would get the mouse cursor out of the way 
The next line is one, uh, choose a topic you want to talk about. Click. We are interested in, let's say, banking. I don't know why. Then we're going to click submit. We get our notification. Ba 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 ba. It says you'll receive an email. And then, I'm going to close this. It says here, uh, I've got a line in there. If you run into any issues, right? Like, so here's the thing if we do this. Oh, you got an issue up here. So then I kind of tell what to do with it. Thanks. We look forward to serving you. Okay. This is kind of a long, rough recording. You know, if I was really doing this and not talking you guys through it, it might be a little bit shorter, but that's okay. We're not, we're not super worried about that right this time. So here's the introduction. I, I put that in here just to save time, uh, simply because I feel like it, we weren't talking, we didn't want to talk about intros, but if we listen to that first line, we'll just get it lined up here. Welcome to the Fidelity Holdings website. Whether you're looking to open a new account. Okay, so we got to about here. And so we might need to shift these just a little bit. So we're just, at this point, we're just going to start lining things up. Now I'm going to bring this recording down here and I'm going to put it, let's put it with, let's bring down this introduction here. So now they can be, they're, they're can put together. So that way I'm not having any gaps. And so now let's go here. Whether you're looking to open a new I'm account. I'm just going to get my mouse. Okay, I'm gonna turn that extra audio off because it's gonna drive everyone, including myself, crazy. And we'll refer to it if we need to. So I'm just dropping that gain down so I don't have to listen to it. The reason I like to have the audio on though is it just gives me a sense of if I need to like, what was that? What was I supposed to be doing there? So now let's manage your investments or just learn more. We have information we'd love to share with you. Okay, so it's just about here that like this, this is the end of that first part. And right here, I'm not even moving until that point. So we're just gonna drag this over and that's it's basically just cutting it. Um, and we're gonna just basically go through this process of trying to line up now. So we got account, manage your investments, or just learn more. We have information we'd love to share with you. Okay, get, so it's, it's a little bit long and that's okay. Again, this is why if you, you build in a few pauses, my mouse, my mouse cursor, and let me just, for convenience sake, let me add a visual effect here. Um, actually, where is my gesture? Nope. Cursor effects, there's what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna take this and, well, I actually don't need to go in there. I can go to my mouse here and we're just gonna scale up that mouse so you guys can see a little bit better because I realize it's a little hard to see. So we get a little bit of a wiggle there, um, but I'm not super worried about that. I'm gonna lock my audio track just so I don't mess anything up. And here we can just kind of trim out some of that like kind of wiggliness. And this is really, you're just gonna keep doing this, right? Like, and again, this is where uh, the magnetic track is really helpful because it, it just snaps things Learn back more. in place. We have information we'd love to share with you. Okay. So to get started, first fill out your first and last name. I'm just going to let this play until we start moving. To get towards, started. Because it's way too long. Your, okay. So that's where we just start filling out the names. So you can see we got tons of extra. And again, we just want to make sure we've stopped scrolling there. So let's just get rid of this big chunk. And again, this kind of work, again, this is, it's not exciting process to watch. And that cursor is absolutely awful huge right now. We won't keep it that way, but it's convenient for seeing it. To get started, first fill out your first and last name. Now, here, here's a, a, a thing that I think we should talk about. Let me switch back to the camera so we can talk. So one of the decisions you're gonna have to make as you're doing this is the kind of the order of operations do you want to say it and then do it? Do you want to do it and then say it? Or do you want them happening at the same time? I think for something simple like this, happening at the same time where like you're asking them to fill out their name, it's not complex. You're not taxing them a lot with a lot of information. It's not going to be typically really hard for them to do. I think it's okay to go at the same time. And what that does will make a smoother, kind of faster tutorial. If you have information that is complex, I think that you you want a little bit of a lag. You probably want to, you know, maybe move, start moving and then say what you're doing. You can do it the other way. And I know there's some research out there and I'm trying to remember off the top of my head which way is better. I always forget because it's, you know, the two different things, which one's actually better. Um, I think it, you think about your audience and think what's going to lead them down the path to most success. 
do they need to see that motion to get their attention? Or do you need to tell them what's going to happen? And you can go extreme, right? Like we could literally say, enter your first and last name, show them how to do it. That's a very long drawn out video, especially if you've got complicated steps. So something to, to really, really consider there. So um, I want to look at these questions real quick and we'll take a, we'll get back into this editing here in just a second. Uh, so uh, Mage Hassan asks, is asking about animated uh, kanji letter videos. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like we can't do that yet. Thank you for the feedback. Homebrew Audio, thank you for your comment. Uh, you said, I tried this yesterday, did a voice narration first, intending to do the video portion afterward, but I couldn't hear the audio narration while recording the video part. Any thoughts why this is? So you would have to have it playing on something else. Um, one thing to really be thoughtful is you're going to want to wear headphones as you do that. Um, but like you might try a different media player. Like you could just export your audio as like a, in Camtasia, for instance, you can go, I think to a WAV file or MP, uh, not MP4, M4A. Um, just if you're on Mac, it, it just go to share. If uh, Windows, I believe you have to go to file export audio. So uh, try that. Uh, that's a, it's a, I don't know why in that particular instance without more information, it wasn't working for you, but um, if it's not working through Camtasia, you might just use like a, a simple media player to do that. Uh, thanks, Jim, for your feedback. I did see that when I was playing the audio back so you could hear it. Jason Hayes. Hey, thanks for tuning in on LinkedIn. We're trying, trying to get things going over on LinkedIn, so we appreciate you guys tuning in over there. Jason says, I recorded audio with both my camera and the PC. Sometimes I have difficulty zooming in close enough to do a perfect sync between the two. Am I missing something? So when... Um, you are zooming in, in Camtasia in particular, uh, you can zoom into like a frame per dash. So you got, you could see the th full 30 frames. Um, to get, you can't really get closer than that in Camtasia, uh, but make sure I'm understanding this difficult enough to do a perfect sync between the two. Yeah. Um, so it gets complicated in terms of like the alignment, but what I like to do, and this is, if you're on camera in particular, it's easier because you can do like a clap and you'll get that spike like I did with the snapping earlier, but then you can also see the physical connection. When you're doing screen recording, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to do. Uh, however, the again, unless it's camera mouse sync, which is really annoying when it's out of sync, um, I'd recommend that you know if you're off a frame or two on screencasting video, probably not the end of the world uh, because you can always make it up someplace along the line by just kind of trimming, cutting a little, a couple frames out. So hopefully that helps. And Pascal, hello. Uh, okay, let's get back down to business. We got this video to edit and we're going to try to get this thing cooking here. Okay, so here we are. Uh, let's see how that lined up. Let's play that back so we can see it. To get started, first fill out your first and last name. Cool. Now, one thing we're going to do is probably after I'm done getting this lined up and something we should probably think about is I've got these gaps uh, to get the started. Audio, we might if, if we're not if you're not happy with those gaps, what you might want to do is just take the time right now. Again, I'm going to lock that so it doesn't affect my video. Just, you know, think about what like what's a reasonable gap. And, you know, if don't worry, you're not going to ruin anything here is if if. if uh, you didn't leave enough gap, you can always unstitch it or turn off stitching altogether and you can get that space back. This is not destroying destroying the audio altogether. Kind of like this Love first one. Love to share with you. Because we got action. To get started, first fill out your first got and it. last name. To get started, fill out your first and last name. Oh, it looks like I missed one. So always go back and listen to this. And I did this on purpose yesterday. Always go through your audio and listen to it. Make sure you've got everything. Don't just guess because you, if you're really good at the snaps, fine. But if uh, if you missed it, um, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to take that out. Let's lock these back down again. Next, enter your email address. Okay, so now we know in this email address on the video, it took me a little bit of time, right? Like, Boom. Uh, then I actually did it again and I have to decide which one I like better. Let's just, uh, for the sake of argument, what we're going to do is we're going to get this here and I'm going to put a split in my timeline. The reason I want to do that there is just make this easier to edit. I've got this magnetic track on right here, down here. And what that's going to do is just snap everything back over to the left. So where do I start moving my 
we're going to say let's let's just put another split and we're going to get rid of the whole section. Now we can watch it a little bit more closely. Next, enter your email address. Good timing. Then choose which topic. You're, like I said, it takes me way too long to do that. So um, let's get to the end of the, where, let's just say right there. I'm going to put another split. Now, how do we do this? We could literally cut the audio and just have silence and make people watch me type terribly. Uh, I could, a couple options, and if you want to tell me what option you think is best, you tell me. We could do a uh, visual effect uh, where we're going to add clip speed, where what basically what that does, if I add it here, we're going to just take this and we're going to speed it up lickety split so when we watch that back. Next, enter your email address. I'm a lot faster typing that way. Then, or if that's not what you want to do, I'm going to get rid of that. We could actually just take this middle section and let's just do, uh, I, I'm going to guess at the length here. Let's gonna, we're going to uh, ripple delete. And now we could put a transition in there just to cover this up. Like, and let's do, we're just going to, let's just try a, a fade. Right, let me zoom in because I can't see my timeline. Oh yeah, I got to unstitch this first before I add the, uh, uh, where'd it go? Unstitch media at the top. So now before you add your transition, you can't have stitched media. So then what that lo that's gonna look like. Next, enter your email address. It went so enter fast. Enter your email address. So, you know, I might make this a little bit longer of a transition just so. Next, enter your email address. I kind of like the clip speed better, However, it's really your call. On, those are all solutions to a particular problem. You've got, a, you know, you've got a, tons of ways you can tackle this. Um, so let me just undo this because I actually really do like the clip speed. Uh, I think a lot better, uh, simply because I think it it didn't feel bad, right? It didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like something wonky was happening there. It felt natural. It just felt like Matt's a fast typer for once. And we're gonna bring that down. Uh, we'll say about right there. And again, we'll watch that back. Next, enter your email address. Cool. Then choose which topic you're interested in. Okay, so now this is, we got again, a kind of a big, maybe too long of a pause, but I'm not really worried about that because it made it, like it's making it easy for me to do stuff. I got to cut out all this extra junk from when I decided that I didn't like the first take, which is, is fine. I'm going to delete that again. Uh, so I got rid of that. Then choose which topic you're interested in. Click on submit. Okay, so I got a little, again, the whole process here, it, I mean, this it, I know this probably feels very repetitive, um, but it, that is the nature of what we're doing. Um, it's just a repetitive process. Once we've got this audio down, Click we're on just submit. making it fit. And by having, by having all this stuff, kind of like these long gaps, and my mouse cursor just kind of literally forcing myself to take my hand off the mouse cursor, that just makes it so much easier because now I've got it stationary in one point and it's good to go. Once you've submitted, you'll see that the note of, okay, so we got a little, it's like, looks like it's going a little bit fast. So again, we, you know, this is, uh, we're going to be doing the art of things here. I'm going to turn off my mag magnetized track just because I think it makes it a little harder to do this part. Um, if we zoom in down here, uh, looks like I got rid of, maybe I want too many undos. So there's, so this, this is edit video editing. Which topic you going back, in. looking at it, looking at it. And then we're going to just select. So yeah, I didn't leave, I probably didn't leave myself enough room in here, but let's do delete range. Uh, turn that magnetization back on, turn it back off. Okay, so now click submit on submit. Once you've submitted, you'll see that the notification that you request has been submitted. Perfect, looks great. And then, uh, you know, again, we might, you want to be thinking about timing on this. I might want to clean up some of those audio gaps. This is very slow paced. Uh, some tutorials typically require that, but this one doesn't. You'll receive an email from Fidelity Holdings from one of our agents. Okay, I thought about for this part, particular part, we could have done another screen recording. We still could, like an email coming in. I, I think for our example, it's just more work to get that set up, but that's uh, something we've definitely, I've done in the past. 
If you run into any issues, look for the prompts that will help you correct the issue. Oh my gosh, that worked Thanks. out. And we look forward to almost perfectly, right? Like I, I probably would do like a zoom and pan here. I think uh, the idea here is you get the idea. Like we would want to fiddle with this. Now, um, that's really it. Uh, obviously, it gets more complicated. Let's go back to my camera view here so we can look at you guys. Can We don't have to see the screen right now. So obviously, this gets more complicated with more dynamic, more complicated subjects where you've got more things happening, more kind of events. Um, but the concept, the base concept remains the same, right? Like your audio is saying something. You need to have something on screen. And if you don't have a, a specific action, like it's really easy when it says click this button, sim click submit, enter this. Those are easy because you know exactly what you should show. You should be showing the thing you're saying. At the very beginning of this script, let me bring the script back over and we can kind of talk about this because I think it's, this is really important. We've got things like this Welcome to Fidelity Holdings website, right? Like what are you going to show during that? What action could you show that makes sense? You're not going to, you know, that's why I chose like this introduction or even this first thing, right? We, we, we could show the website on this line, the second line, but it's not super exciting. This is where your B-roll or your secondary footage comes into play or, you know, might use stock images or stock footage. Same at the end, right? Thanks. And we look forward to serving you. What are you going to show for that? Uh, like you could put an outro. Um, so let's say, let's actually, let's look at this introduction, the intro here. Uh, so let me go back to the very beginning. Let's just play this through a little bit. And you can see why, you know, this first stuff needed something. Welcome to the Fidelity Holdings website. Whether you're looking to open a new account, manage your investments, or just learn more, we have information we'd love to share with you. Okay, so you get the idea, right? Like, and, and I don't even love it here because I feel like you're wasting uh, three seconds of my time if I was watching this video just to show me your logo. Um, I, branding purposes, yes, but I think if I was doing a real video here, I'd want to trim this up or give them something of value right away. I mean, frankly, what we could do is we could go to our library. I'm just going to... Um, I don't even know what these are. Uh, we could just add, we could add a track that's got music to this. Now uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because I mean, I mean, are, do you want music in a tutorial? Probably not. I think it takes away a lot of kind of understanding. Your brain can process an audio voice and some images at the same time, kind of multi-streaming pretty well. But once you add another audio track, it gets a little trickier. So. If we play this back though, it gets a little bit, at least a little bit more exciting. Welcome to the Fidelity Holdings website. Whether you're looking to open a new account and manage you your play investments, it, but that's actually or pretty nice. just learn more, we have information we'd love to share with you. To get started, first fill out your first and last name. Next, enter your email address. Cool. I mean, it start. It all comes together. And, and again, this is a super simple kind of example. I'm just checking comments and stuff from you guys to see if there's any questions or anything like that. Because uh, I do want to answer those if there's anything coming in. Um, but yeah, I mean, like seriously, this is this is the process, uh, and it honestly doesn't have to be that difficult when when you're looking at it. So um, let's switch back here. So. What do you think? Is this something that, does that work for you guys? Is that something you're you're giving a go? Uh, do you wanna argue with me that you think recording video first and then audio makes sense? And again, this is uh, for screen videos in particular. I think this is a really good workflow. Uh, Jim, thank you for liking the music. I, you know, I've got a lot of stuff in my library and that one, I thought that worked really well. Uh, but so I, I think when you're doing different videos, as soon as you're starting to add in camera, uh, like me, like, like me talking to a camera or you talking to camera or something like that, the workflow is going to change. Uh, although I do, if you're really down for like trying to get the best audio quality, like obviously like, uh, uh, I'm using an iPhone for my camera right now. It doesn't have the world's best microphone. It's, it's okay. It will work. But if I can record through my Yeti and that, um, 
it's just all in all, like if I record those separately, it's going to sound better. Although then you've got to mix it into your, your video, right? Like in, you need it to match the mouth. So that's a whole different story, but you can tell lots of stories without ever getting on camera. If you use stock footage, like stock video footage. And uh, I mean, TechSmith has the asset library that you can subscribe to. There's some free stuff out there. There's also lots of other places you can go to get those things like pexels.com. I think P-E-X. ELS is one. Uh, if you want really great photography, unsplash.com has a lot of free, it's not stock photography, it's photographers uh, putting up their things. You can tell stories through those other things. And again, you want it to match your audio because your audio is going to be the primary driver. And you can say things, you, of course you want to show things, but you can say things that are going to give context. It's going to give deeper information than maybe just what you can show. Like if I tell you to click on a button, I can show you clicking on the button. That's easy. But why are you clicking on that button? Why did you go over do, to move a slider? And so this is why I think this workflow for non-camera video works super, super well. So um, Jeff says, just start creating tutorials and have done both live and audio first. Finding audio first is great. Jeff, thank you. I, thanks for that. Thanks for getting my back because that, that is absolutely, I think, important that you've experienced it, right? Because I, like I said, I know people that do it a different way. And if that's the way that works for you and you're fastest and you're making your best videos, then that's the thing you should do. Uh, otherwise, you know, just because I'm saying to do it this one way, it can work. Um, but if that's not what you like to do and it's not working for you, don't do it. And Jeff goes on to say, really good for bringing in remote team members to help with narrator, narrations. Just send me their audio. Yeah. So this is, yeah, it is really great because you can get other people involved. They make the audio and you can build the video. And I know if you're like in the learning field or marketing, even you're working with subject matter experts and you want them to record something, uh, they don't have to also make the video. Although it'd be great if they knew how, learned how, because it doesn't have to be super hard. I'm glad you benefited from the session. That's why we're doing these. We want people to, uh, you know, look, the goal, TechSmith, obviously, we are makers of Camtasia, Snagit, Audiate, Nomia, these great products. I think I've been with them tomorrow as of 14 years. Tomorrow is my 14-year anniversary, and I love TechSmith. I love the tools that I get to be part of making and creating, uh, but I have to tell you, I love the TechSmith Academy. It's uh, something I've been working on for now a couple years. Uh helping build it from the ground up. And I love it because we get to help people. That's what the TechSmith Academy is all about, is we are about helping you guys be successful. And with that, I'll just let me go to this right now. Uh, go check out the TechSmith Academy if you haven't. Free tutorials. Uh, look, so you can probably find a lot of the information out on YouTube, but we're trying to bring it all together, give you a kind of a, a hopefully a, a definitive voice to help you so that you have a springboard to go learn more. Uh, we've got great interviews. If you know any of these names, Roberto Blake, Sean Canal, uh, Tim uh, Schmoyer, Brian Fanzo, Amy Landino. Go, they are fantastic people making videos all the time for YouTube and for live and things like that. And they go listen to their interviews. You will learn something from them. As well as in, from an instructional side of things, uh, Bob Pike, Shannon Tipton, Trish Shul, uh, Kevin Thorne, uh, and about 10 other people, Debbie Richards, we got like these awesome video interviews out there that we've taken cut down into courses that you guys can go watch just a, the kind of our condensed version of the best parts or go watch the full interviews. Really great information. Uh, Franklin, oh, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you, the feedback that the Academy is awesome. Um, yeah, so Tech Programmer, to your question, this this live event will be on YouTube. It's on it will be on Facebook and on LinkedIn. We're streaming to those locations right now, so you can watch it. At, pick your pick your poison, <laughs> wherever you want to watch it. So it will be available to you. Just go to our channel and uh, one of those platforms, and you'll you'll be able to see it. I see you're on YouTube, so uh, you should just go to TechSmith, search for TechSmith, find our channel. And then there's that, I think, a live tab you can... You can. I hope this has been helpful because I think as I have learned in my f now 14 years of making videos at TechSmith, a lot of tutorial videos, you know, a lot, lot of live stream videos, a lot of marketing videos, I, I realized that this workflow of audio first can seem and feel awkward because it's not the way we natively think about making a video. We think about pointing a camera or recording something all at once and then but you're going to get more flexibility you're going to have more opportunities to kind of 
think about how the pacing is going and pacing becomes really important. It's really, you wanna make sure you're moving at the right pace. So quick, quick example. Camtasia has a certification program and if you purchase maintenance, you can get access to it and we work with a vendor. His name is Daniel Park to help us create a lot of content. And Daniel used to work at TechSmith uh, you know, a long time ago before I was ever there and he started his own business. He's written a book, multiple books on Camtasia. So we, we partnered with him because timing, we needed to get things moving along and resources, right? Daniel has a pacing that tends to be, for me, slow. He's very methodical, kind of very easy. It's easy going. It's easy listening. He's got a great voice. And for me, I have to review every single one of his videos multiple times. And I usually watch them at 1.5 or faster speed because I need to get, one, I need to get through them, but also I don't need to learn everything. And I thought, man, I wonder if our customers think this is too slow. And a few people did. You know, they thought, oh, I, you know, but they also knew the program pretty well. But most people find it really easy to listen to and easy to follow along. And so you got to think about your audience. What does your audience need? Not what do you need? What pace do they need to see the steps or whatever it is that you're showing them? And so be thoughtful about how fast and that audio first flow will allow you to, to really do that. Uh, and Jeff, th Jeff thinks, isn't audio first the same way they make animated movies? You know, that's a really great question. I don't know if that's exactly the way they do it. Um, I know Pixar, for instance, a, a leader in animated movies, does a lot of work on story, um, but I'm sure there's a lot of coordination of scripting and timing, uh, but I would imagine you'd have to have the, uh, how long did it take the actor to say something, or if they had something crazy happen, like, on, you know, with their voice, like, what? how long does it take them to do that thing, and then you'd match it, so probably, probably that way for sure. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks for great questions. I appreciate every one of you. And you know what? Today, make a video.